A warm welcome to the Documentary Film Festival in Munich in 2022. We're here with one of the nominee films for the Doc Edit Award presented by Adobe. And I have the pleasure to talk to the editors, uh, Osa Mossberg and Lene Shu, about the film of uh, Jennifer Malquist, Doris. First question of all is, uh, two editors, how did this work out? What was your working relationship? I uh, also started to edit the film uh, for three months, making the structure. Um, and uh, I took over and had six weeks finishing the film. And um, how was it? Uh, I, I could imagine like um, editing a film, it's like your baby. Uh, you're heavily creatively involved and how is to hand it over to someone else? Was it a problem? Yeah, it was it was because it's 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 a baby, and you work with it, and you when it starts to life, you have you you're living, you, you starts to be alive. The film, you know, when it starts to work, and you put it together, then it's like you're giving your baby to to somebody else. But Lina was the perfect uh, editor to see the story, and uh, I we were talking a long time, me and the director, of uh, who could edit this, and I had no clue who to ask because it's so difficult but uh, then lena the name was coming up you know and and it was so i was sure that this was the per perfect editor for it because we in Denmark, we also in sweden we know each other really good who how we edit and and what stories we and the personality also of the editors so um, yeah and uh, it was lena you you were fantastic <laughs> to taking Thanks. over this baby Thanks. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, sorry, Lene. No, it was just an honor to. Uh, I always wanted to work with Osa, but we never, you know, we had never had the opportunity. So it was an honor to take over a project from her, and and uh, you know Jennifer and Osa had made a, a super, you know, it was not the rough cut. It was more a first or second cut. Um, so it was like luxury taking over a film like that because you didn't have to go down to all the material uh the structure was there so it was the fine tuning and the, you know the perfection in the in the in the scenes and music and things so that was just the uh, luxury so the structure is something we will talk uh, again later because it's kind of a difficult and fragile thing um, but first of all, how, how did you start the process of editing? Um, how many hours of material have to, uh, did you have to conquer or to see through? Was it massive amount? I think it, it was, yeah, it was, I think it was 60 something because I, I used four, five weeks to see the material. And you can see, you can see maybe 20 hours a week, I should say, and, and you can, see it and take it in because it's it's you have to I, I i always think that the editing starts when you see the material because you have to be so open in your stomach because i work a lot with my stomach and my intuition but also you know to connect it with the thoughts you have so just taking it in and really feel the material because it's the first time you see it the second time you will feel something else so it's the first meeting with the materials is so important. So it starts there. So I think it, I used four weeks, four and a half weeks to just see the material through. Yeah. And then because uh, often, often there are um, inherent structures like um, history or time or uh, certain events who dictates kind of a structure but but in this case uh, there's no clear structure in the material uh, but you have to find something to tell the story how, how did you proceed this uh, task it was that uh, in the beginning it was like panicking a little bit because how to start and where to start and how to do films like this but i i did uh, a lot a lot of films actually or have no timeline structure in the beginning you know, we have to tell this because it's more about the emotion of this girl that you have to develop and also the, the way out of their grief, I think. I don't think maybe they 
will stop grieving in this film, but they have, a, 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 do, did they develop something together through the film? And I, we wanted it to be a work with them together to come out of this, this uh, tragic uh, thing who happened with their mother. And so that was the issue that take the emotions from the girls and development of their thoughts to be the structure in the film. And just to imagine the process, how, how did you approach it? Is, is there any, is, is there any um, items you use or um, tricks of the trade uh, you use to, to come up with uh, some structure? Are you, are you plotting it out? I, I work on the wall. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't I, I understand just... that. Now I work on the wall because I have some notes. I always take some, you know, small paper and I, when I see the material, I think this could be a scene. Then I put it on the paper. So there I have one scene. I'm lucky. <laughs> then I see more material to, through and then I say, I can't use that. I can't use that, but this is fine. Okay. This is about the issue. This, this I could uh, use. Then I have another scene, you know, and when I have all these papers with all these scenes, then it's also a natural way of saying, I, I want to have this when they are young in the beginning, and I want to have this in the ending. And then you start building a three act structure in that mood, you know? So it's like building it up in, on the wall before I start editing. So you use but the wall. doing it when. You when use the wall with. with yeah, a, a, a lot, a lot. And uh, Lena. And I also, yeah, we also used an online program where you take screen dumps of the scenes. Um, and you can put that in and you can put uh, like notes on them, on the screen dumps. Um, and uh, that was a big help for the director um, to have a visual like uh, overview of the film, especially later in the process when we were locking the, the structure uh, and trying to move one scene up front or, you know, like you always do. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And then it was uh, very good for her. And also for me, that was a super good tool because sometimes all those post-it notes fall down from the wall and you get frustrated. So having it there on like a, a, a pin board on, online, it was really helpful visual. Uh, when I when I first um, started seeing the movie, um, I was um, uh, kind of overwhelmed with the challenge to find out who is who and uh, who's in which um, relation to uh, how are the relations between those protagonists. Uh, but I had a lot of difficulties to find that out. And uh, uh, was it? Um, was it something some other people in the process of making the film brought up to, or is it just just me uh, uh, having those um, uh, difficulties in the beginning, just in the beginning? It, it was mostly in the beginning. And Yeah, uh, to be honest, when I saw the film the first time, I had the same problem. <laughs> I felt it, but I didn't, uh, it didn't bother me in uh, taking the film in. Um, but I had to, I did have that in the back of my mind all this time, um, that I was my first, you know, reaction of it. Like I also talked about seeing the material for the first time. For me, uh, the first impression when I saw the film the first time was something I really need to keep and remember. Um, but then uh, we had some test screenings at the end of the process. We had a test screening for a younger audience and uh, some older people were there too, my age. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then also, of course, the producers saw it several times. Um, I must say the younger audience, they were like, no, we don't have any problems with who's who, and we don't have any problems with the time changing, that they're young and then they get older, they, you know, they just, um, connected everything. The mm, older ones <laughs> had a bit of a bigger issue, who's who and when is that and things like that. Um, so of course Jennifer and I, we listened to that and we uh, looked into what we could do. Um, there were some suggestions putting um, uh, years 
if you're talking about uh, the, the times and not the people, that this was 2013 or 11, and this is uh, 2021. Um, but we didn't think that was how this film is told. Um, and it didn't matter because uh, the whole film is more about one process of grief and getting hope again. And it doesn't matter if you're 10 or 21. Mm -hmm. um, but then with the girls, that they look different all the time. We did some uh, corrections in the beginning of the film, trying to help the audience a bit. Mm -hmm. um, for example, did we put some uh, lines in from the oldest girl, Maya, mm -hmm. that referred to her as a daughter, or she referred to her mom. Mm -hmm. um, we also put um, a picture, She's there's a scene in the beginning where Maya, the oldest girl daughter, is watching uh, photos. And we made a, a Photoshop of a, a, a picture that she's watching her and her sister and her mom. Uh, that was not on the screen, but to help, you know, to say it's a mom and three girls and she's one of them. So, so we did listen and tried to, in the language of the film, to help um, the audience. And I, I didn't want to say it's a bad thing, but it, it wasn't kind of challenging uh, because it, it took me quite a while to realize that the oldest of the three daughters is uh, from uh, a different father. And, um, and those little things uh, are coming up uh, now and then and you're putting together a puzzle because as, as viewer, I'm really interested in the background. It, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm heavily interested in the background. I know it's, it's about grief, but I'm, I'm really interested in all those connections to draw them. And, and this is something I was constantly looking for and kept mm. me really um, uh, in, in the film and uh, kind of a detective work. And you deliberately didn't show me everything. And I'm grateful for that. So <laughs> that's <was> a good <laughs> thing for me, but it was challenging. This is what yeah. I wanted to say. Also, the, the jumps in time, uh, sometimes I was quite surprised by uh, how, how this worked now. And, um, but in the end, it worked out for me. What about adults? They are adults, but they doesn't seem important. I don't know the father or the rest of the family, although there are some adults. Yes, we have uh, we have this, you know, that also is in the background because it's important to have uh, that they didn't work alone, you know. They have some other persons. When their mom died, uh, they have her, their grandmother, you know, to take care of them and also a father. And that was important to show, uh, show in the film. But in the yeah, same time, it, it was, was not, not. Yeah, but in this, it was not a film about them. It was about the the father and the grandma. It was a film about the girls, mm -hmm. and and their um, process of grief. And that was also Jennifer's first uh, take on this film in in twenty eleven, that she was going to do a film about young people and grief. So that was very clear, you know, when I took over the project, and I think it's very clear in the film too that that's like that is the story, and <laughs> and not the uh, grown-ups' um, issues or problems. Yeah. Then you mentioned uh, beforehand. Then, if you bring in somebody new, you have to tell more about it. You can't just. Um, teaser it uh, and, and then and then don't fulfill it so so if you're bringing in some different persons you have probably have to explain them and and give them a story too so it's mm. probably due to the length of the movie to concentrate on those mm -hmm. but but it was it was obvious that they are um, adults and there are no names and no um, relations and it's just a focus on the girls which was uh, quite interesting because mm. one would expect to to be them part of the story and in a way mm. they they are not um mm. uh, lena and also what, what do you call the, the biggest challenges in this project for you as editor 
The biggest challenge was to not think too much. Don't construct anything inside the editing room which wasn't real or have a feeling of this is uh, a, a clear emotion, a clear emotion who's not th something constructing inside the head. Because you have to construct things when you go to, through times and you work with feelings that way we do in the film. And if you feel that this is a construction, you have to go very very smooth so and and so you don't have okay that's what you want to tell but you have the emotion of something and that emotion of this girl take it further tell with the music emphasize it with the music but only the you don't go before with the emotions you don't put something on the story but you just try to take the the feelings of the girls and put the other scenes after, you know, in a natural, emotional, intuitive way. Because if you start thinking of this, you will do something, people will not feel anything, but maybe you will understand more. Mm -hmm. So it's like working on the intellectual way, you can say, but I don't understand it, but I don't understand it. But if the goal is that you, after the film, can feel that you understand what it is this girl's going through, that you have managed with telling the story. So it's so important that you take all these these things that they are saying or their feelings, and and that is the 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 issue in the film, and not how you want to construct it here up here. Mm. Um, I think it's the closest answer I can give you. <laughs> Thank you, Rosa. <laughs> Lena. <laughs> Well, I've been thinking uh, now when you posed that question, and uh, I think for me, uh, the biggest challenge was uh, not ruining something that actually worked, <laughs> but still make it, like, improve <laughs> it. Yeah, improve it. Uh, but when I got it, it really worked, you know. Um, so, yeah, improve it, but not ruin it. <laughs> okay. Mm. And uh, a last question. And for... then I had to say something also to the, to you, Lina, because it's very difficult to take over a thing and see what the the things are when you haven't built it for the from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So that you can hear it and listen to it and take it and carry it. You know. Mm. Uh, you really have the you know the you can see that thing and take care of it and do it stronger mm. and see what you know what's uh, missing. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. so fantastic. Thanks. And that's also because Jennifer had a very clear vision mm. of what she wanted with this film. Mm. So in that way, it was easy. You mm. know, uh, she didn't always know how to get there, but she mm. knew what she wanted. Mm. Um, and that's a very big comfort for an editor because then you know you can try things mm. because you have a director that knows if um, that um, what you're doing now could fit in, into her film or not yeah mm. is there any last question <laughs> is there any special moment uh, in the film you you like um, especially or you're proud of being the editor too something where f uh, magic pops for you many things but i think the thing uh, i like mostly that i think always when you're editing it's very difficult to put some pictures that have a symbol and put it the right way. So let's talk about the horses, <laughs> because uh, because it's something. I mean, how can you talk with about two girls saying uh, we you have we helped each other through this, and after that you put some music, a very strong music on, and something very emotional, and then you put two horses standing like this, taking care of each other. That is the girl taking care of each other, mostly. You you know maybe. And that is uh, to make that work without putting some uh, symbols inside that. Mm -hmm. I think I think it works in this film, and I I'm proud that we that we could make it work. You know, I think it's for me. <laughs> and the same question goes to Lena, of course. Yeah. Um. um I think I'm, I'm really 
Yeah, it's not like a special moment in the film. It's just that we, uh, you know, succeeded to keep the 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 feelings and the the way we wanted to tell this story and and listening to everybody around, but but also keep them out because we knew the film. <laughs> <laughs> we were the, yeah. the ones taking care of it so I can't like put a finger on something special but yeah thank you very mm. much Lene also for um being in our mm. talk and um, I'm so sorry yeah. that you can't come o uh, come over but um uh, good to have you on zoom and thank you for mm. for being here thank you for the film for your wonderful film and what we see in Munich in the next documentary film festival We'd love to, yeah. and thank you for having yeah. us. Bye. Bye. Bye.